All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back. Malsberg panel time, and uh, the host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, is with us. Roger Hedgecock, and Newsmax contributor and host of The Right Side on Newsmax Television, Armstrong Williams. And gentlemen, um, the verdict, or should I say the uh, grand jury, uh, uh, deciding not to indict in the so-called New York uh, City uh, NYPD chokehold case. We have all seen the video of that uh, encounter between the police officers and uh, Eric Gardner, who wound up uh, dying. Uh, he uh, had asthma, couldn't breathe, da-da. Um, but um, Armstrong, you know, I'm watching the, uh, the closed captioning on, on CNN as I uh, was waiting during the break, and Sonny Hostin, who I love to pick on more than almost anybody else, um, she calls herself former prosecutor. She can't understand the difference. The grand jury was hearing evidence on whether or not a crime was committed. She keeps saying it's against police procedure to use a chokehold in New York, but it's not against the law. Isn't the grand jury only concerned about the law being broken? Well, hello, Steve. Um, look, all these um, grand jury decisions that are being handed down uh, only fuels the chaos and the minds of people who refuse to believe that a, a grand jury can examine the evidence back and forth, look at the forensics and everything, and come to this kind of confusion and this kind of conclusion. And it doesn't matter what, unless the grand jury in case where it involves white police officers and, and American blacks, until the jury uh, says uh, something that the police officers should be indicted. You, we can talk about this until the cows come home. It's, it's just not going to change. They keep riding their hopes on cases like Ferguson and in New York because they believe this is the defining moment for America to say, we respect you, you're equal on the law, there's not an assault on black men in this country. And the problem is they keep using the wrong cases um, to prove this point in their psyche. Obviously, I wouldn't dare sit here and question the grand jury's decision. I was not in the room. I did not see all the evidence. I don't know in terms of the cross-examination what people change their minds about. And I, we just have to trust our rule of law. All right. Uh, Roger? Well, I think in this case it's, uh, it's obvious that in both Ferguson and New York City, if the uh, individual involved uh, had simply given up, had simply actually raised the hand, don't shoot, uh, they would have been alive today. I, I think that's the primary bottom line point from, you know, a, a perspective, again, as, as with Armstrong. I, have, I wasn't there. I haven't looked at all the evidence. I haven't been in the room. But it seems to me that if you look at that video, here's a man, you know, who could have easily been alive. Uh, if uh, I mean, the police don't like to do chokeholds. They do it, you know, in protection of themselves and people around them. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the thing. You know, in this case, gentlemen, we have the camera that the president wants put on every police officer. We have the whole encounter. We see uh, this is a man who uh, was accused of, or was thought to be selling illegal cigarettes or Lucy's as they're called. And uh, he said, if, if you listen, he said, you're not, you're not arresting me. No, nope, no, he wouldn't do what the cops said. He's about 360 pounds, and it took about four or five cops to bring him down to put his hands behind his back and arrest him. So once again, you're 100% you're correct, Roger. If you obey the police, you know, chances are you're not going to get killed. Yeah, but, you know, listen, um, there are many lesser charges that the grand jury could have considered in this case, reckless endangerment among one of them. Look, I, I, I think I think a conversation, and Steve, it's just interesting. I, I just, do we really have to resort? The guy said, you're choking me, I cannot breathe. That was clearly on, on the tape. I mean, that is just, you can't dispute it. Is there, is, could there have been a other, I, I'm sure the police had no idea that they were, this guy was dying. He was really suffocating. And, but obviously, it, and, 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 I, and we also, you can tell I'm agonized over this, because I just, I just hate this loss of life. I just wish that th those those few police officers could be like the exceptional police officers, the majority, who don't lose lives, who don't resort um, to uh, their guns in order to subdue somebody that's about to do harm or who's out of control. And so I don't want people to get the impression that we are advocating that it's okay in order for the police to do their job to kill somebody in the process. I think that's the last thing we want to happen. But they should raise their hands. They should obey the law, but still, when they don't, can the law enforcement find a way without having the result be 
the death of someone. All right, Roger, I want you to weigh in on that when we come right back. And, of course, it's two different cases. One was self-defense, and this was a, an arrest gone wrong. We'll come right back with uh, Roger and Armstrong. And we are back uh, with the Mullsburg panel, part two. Roger Hedgecock, host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, and Newsmax contributor and host of The Right Side on Newsmax TV, Armstrong Williams. And, uh, Roger, I want to pick up with you. Um, you know, Armstrong, uh, as he said, having a little difficulty in reconciling, um, especially this uh, Eric Gardner grand jury decision on Staten Island. Um, but but I, I, I don't see, you know, any comparison, and I don't know that he was making one, to uh, Ferguson because in one... You know, cop had a right to defend himself, and I see no other alternative than to shoot the way he did. And in this case, it took three guys to bring this guy who didn't want to be arrested down to arrest him. So, I mean, you know, what, what's a cop to do? What is a cop to do? It's a really important question. And in my town, San Diego, we've got my hometown. We, we've done this community policing thing for a number of decades. Our police department does reflect uh, the very uh, the variety of people who live in San Diego. Uh, it is a, a, a concerned police department, but I'll tell you what, with all the training they do, the toughest guys on that police department are the black guys. You don't mess with them. Uh, they are, you know, they're compassionate, they're community-oriented, and so they run up against some punk of whatever race, creed, or color that tries to give them trouble, and believe me, they're going to get enough more trouble than they ever uh, than they ever bargained for, those perps. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, at some point in time, we have to recognize that if you come up against the cops, the duty you have as a citizen is to obey lawful orders and to take direction from these cops. That's that's the law. If you don't do it, I don't care what your race, creed, or color is. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm, and I agonize about these deaths too. I mean, nobody should die, but unfortunately, you get uh, these situations in which you put, you know, the victim puts themselves in that position uh, to die. And by the way, isn't it a liberal problem here? Because the, the whole scenario started with the selling of illegal cigarettes. Well, the war on cigarettes just took a just took a casualty. All right, you want to, you want to finish up on this issue, Armstrong, before we move on to something else? Look, my point is not making comparisons with any grand jury decision. I think the point is, is that in the majority of the cases, almost 90 percent, police officers don't resort to deadly violence against their assailants. They find a way to bring the control situation under control without a loss of life. If 90% of them can get it right, can we get that number to 80, 98%? We're sure and certain there will be instances where people will die. But to me, that should be a last resort. All right, briefly, guys, uh, some pushback today from some conservatives. It appears John Boehner is going to uh, hold a, uh, a symbolic vote in the House against Obama's uh, amnesty executive order, but then he's going to fund uh, with Democratic help, apparently, you know, pass uh, the funding bill that would include the money for the executive order to be carried out at least for the rest of this year before the new Congress comes in. Uh, good move or bad move, Roger? I think Boehner's right on this. I know my, my conservative friends are up in arms, but between now and January, there's very little that's going to be done with Harry Reid's Senate. So to have a, a, a three-month uh, rein in on the Department of Homeland Security budget with a guaranteed uh, debate in the first quarter of next year with the Republicans in charge of both houses of Congress gives us a much better chance to defund this amnesty than if we try to run up the barricades today. It's just pick its charts today, and I don't see any, any benefit to it at all. I think Boehner's right. Armstrong? No, I don't think he should fund it. I, I, don't, I don't trust the president and many of the Democrats in this instance, you fund it now, then they will try to say you funded them, and here we are in January, and you're cutting them off. If this was your position, you should have taken a principal position last year. I think their position should be consistent. I think if Boehner knows are really outraged about this executive order, they should be willing to risk it all. Take a chance under no circumstances are we going to fund this amnesty bill. All right. Interesting, interesting point from both of you gentlemen. And I thank you very much for sticking around. Roger Hedgecock and Armstrong Williams, have a great day. We'll speak to you both soon. Folks, thank if you, you want to be on the show and weigh in on the hot news topics of the day or ask me a hard-hitting question, be sure to go to Newsmax.com slash Skype and sign up. You got to sign up and we'll be in touch with you. It's Newsmax.com slash Skype. It's like talk radio 
where they take phone calls, as I did for so many years. Well, we've been taking from time to time Skype calls. But we have to reach out. You have to reach out to us, and then we'll reach out back to you. So it's Newsmax.com slash Skype. Register now. Give me five is next.